If you have ever watched or attended a bouldering competition, you'll quickly realize that the style of boulder problems is very different from your typical set at the gym. While some of the grades will be numerically equivalent to what you're used to climbing, many of the movements may feel completely novel. Route setters follow a unique formula that helps them create distinct problems for climbing competitions. It's called the RAC scale and stands for Risk, Intensity, Complexity. This video will outline the RAC scale and provide examples of competition boulder problems with their respective skills that showcase each element of the scale. If you'd like more info on the RIC scale, check the video description for links. We recently had a bouldering competition at Sacramento Pipeworks. The competition included 80 problems, with number 1 being the easiest at V0, and number 80 being the hardest at V11. You were responsible for scoring the climbs you completed, and your final score was the sum of your 5 highest scores or five hardest climbs. You can look at risk as low percentage moves. These are movements that require a high degree of commitment, focus, and coordination, and once initiated are almost impossible to recover from. Risk can be a great equalizer as it doesn't solely test traditional climbing attributes like finger strength or pulling power. The most classic example of risk is a dyno. This is an all or nothing move because you are momentarily giving up all your points of contact between holds. The good news is that most dynos are designed to land on a good hold. While you do need full commitment, you are given a slight margin for error in terms of landing accuracy. The best advice I can give for dynos is, don't hesitate set up, and go. The more you think about it, the more variables you introduce into a relatively straightforward movement. Coordination moves are also common in boulders that score high in risk. Here, we have a lateral running dyno that involves a hands-free foot placement leading into a two-hold paddle through sequence. Despite being graded lower than the previous climb, the starting moves were very low percentage for me. The key in learning running dynos like this is to maintain your forward momentum. Focus on continuously moving your body towards the target hold and avoid reaching out too early before the body is in position. Intensity is a measure of strength, power, and tension. How hard can you really climb? Problems that score high in intensity are typically overhung, have small holds, and big moves. This is where all the training you did for finger strength, pulling power, and core tension all come into play. Naturally, physically stronger climbers will excel in this category. Here is a straightforward, moderate intensity problem. It's set on a 45 degree overhang the holds are mostly small but positive, and there are several moves that require decent core tension. The beta has a nice flow, and it isn't too cryptic to figure out. This problem scores a bit higher in intensity and has some complexity sprinkled in. The holds are slightly bigger than the previous problem, but awkwardly positioned and less positive. That means they are harder to hang on to, and you have a shorter window to make decisions. The footholds are angled a bit uncomfortably, requiring you to use very active feet to stay tight between moves. The beta has a puzzling beginning sequence, as it provides you with two options for going out left. After the lower crux, the top half is much more straightforward, but requires strength, power, and commitment. There's no shortcut around training for intensity. You need to put in the time to develop good finger strength and pulling power. Once you've done at least a year of consistent climbing, you can look into protocols for hangboard and campus board training. Complexity is one of my favorite aspects of climbing as it tests your problem solving and pattern recognition ability. 
Problems that score high in complexity have the trickiest beta. They require a thoughtful approach and a good understanding of angles, movement, and positioning. Volumes are commonly found in a complex problem. This is because they can be used in a variety of ways and offer several options for body positioning. Here we have a problem in the intermediate grade range, but with a beta that is not very straightforward. Though there seems to be a lot of options, the amount of good usable edges is actually quite few. I can identify these edges by their flat or in-cut slopes, and also because they're the ones that have the most chalk on them. Here we have a more difficult complex problem. The handholds are easier to understand, but the trick seems to be getting from cluster to cluster efficiently. And to top it off, the finish involves finding a stable balance point where you can comfortably match on two unusable handholds. Very sketch. I can give two bits of advice for dealing with complex problems. First, find a sequence that feels the most comfortable for the body. This is done by developing a good understanding of angles and counterpressure with multi-directional pulling. This means venturing outside of the comfort zone of downward crimps and practicing more on side pulls, lie backs, and underclings. Second, follow the feet. Setters will oftentimes use footholds as clues for the path they want you to take. Instead of only looking at handholds, observe where the footholds are placed and visualize how the body has to be positioned for the feet to be there. Some problems will showcase a combination of multiple elements. Here we have one that is both intense and complex. Since the problem is more physically demanding, it helps to have a solid game plan before hopping on, instead of trying to figure it out mid-climb. This next problem was one of the most popular from the comp. A small degree of risk at the beginning, and a fun bit of complexity at the end. Comp problems can be very helpful as the variety of styles it offers can be eye-opening to the gaps in your abilities. If you want to become a well-balanced and versatile climber, developing skill in the risk, intensity, and complexity elements is extremely valuable. Continue to address your weaknesses and always embrace the learner mindset. Until next time, move better, climb harder.